Hey, how's it going? Hey, Jeremiah, thank you for joining us. Dina King, go ahead. Hey, Jeremiah, how have you grown as a player and a person since you first stepped foot at, on Chapel Hill? Um, I'd say it's definitely been a lot more vocal um, in the locker room and then, I mean, outside, around the team. We're not around the team, I think. Um, I also became more vocal. Um, I think that's just come along with since uh, since the Mac and the staff had came in, I think, playing that first year and with the older guys and them coming to me for advice, them coming in to check in with me with uh, stuff on the field, I think that gave me the confidence to uh, start being more vo uh, vocal on the field and in the locker room. Was there a moment early in your career here that it just hit you that you could play at this level? Um, yeah, I think that was um, I think the year before Matt got in here. I think um, I think that I figured that out because I, when I came in, I was like 190 pounds, 195 pounds. I mean, I wasn't at the weight or size at all to really play uh, power five football at inside linebacker at an effective level. So I think um, I think when my second year came along, I think I really uh, got com uh, really got the confidence. That I believed I could play on this level, and then. I think um, when Coach Matt came in and his staff, I think they just boost my confidence um, um, knowing that I could play on this level, and I think that just carried out onto the field. Thank you. Okay, uh, Michael Coe, go ahead. Hey, Jeremiah. So you've been described as sort of the heart and soul of this defense. Once you've graduated, who do you see taking over that mantle as you know, defensive captain, defensive leader? Man, uh, I think there's, I think it's going to come with a variety of guys. Um, the guys who are going to end up staying. Um, I think, I think Cedric, Cedric Gray is a, a perfect example. A guy who's starting to learn his position and a lot of positions around himself. Um, I think Cameron Rucker has been um, a quiet leader on the on this team. Who's, who's done everything right. Says, um, knows when to stand up and say things and knows when to let things be. Um, I think, uh, I think Cedric Gray. And Cameron Rucker are two guys that I think really going to be able to carry on this process. And then, um, I mean, it, it, they've been doing stuff that that I've seen throughout the year that that um, they weren't doing a year ago. And I think that just came with their confidence as they played on the field, getting guys together, getting guys in the film room, and out being asked to do so. So I think Cedric Gray and um, um, Cameron Rucker are two guys that I think will help carry on this process. Thank you, Gregory Hall. Jeremiah, what's been one of the highest highs you've experienced and then what's been one of the lowest lows um, since you've been in Chapel Hill? Um, one of my lowest lows was definitely uh, my redshirt freshman year, uh, three or four weeks into the season. I, uh, I, uh, had a, I thought I had an adductor strain during practice one day and then the, the following week I uh, got an MRI and I found out I had toured my adductor. So. Um, definitely, when I tore my adductor my freshman, my redshirt freshman year, and I wasn't be able, to, wasn't able to finish out the season, uh, be a part of the team, and really uh, work out at all. That was probably definitely my lowest lows of uh, um, being here at Chapel Hill, not being a uh, being a part of the team, but not really feeling like I was out there helping the team uh, get a win together, and you know, not being out there to help. And then uh, my highs of highs, I think it was it was actually the first. First game that uh, Coach Mack got here, and uh, when he, when we played in Charlotte against South Carolina, um, uh, I already knew I felt the atmosphere um, change as soon as Coach Mack came in with everybody. He brought in the staff. I mean, working on the weight room with Coach Hess, I felt the en energy shift. But I believe when we beat um, when we beat South Carolina and Charlotte for that very first game, I felt like the energy really pushed, and I felt like the change uh, the change um, time have changed around here that we could really be a good Power Five football team. And on Saturday, um, when you're honored for for Senior Day, who who all's coming up? Any family? Just what's that? What do you expect that day to be like for you? Oh yeah, I mean it's a day for me just to reflect and just be um, grateful for the ones who've been around me all my life, helping me get to this point. But um, I also think it's a time for reflect, for us to reflect um, as seniors on one another on on what we've done around. Uh, around this campus since we've been and what we've been done on this football team since we've been on this football team. Um, I'm definitely um, hugging the guys I've been around since since I've gotten here, like Tamon Fox, Garrett Walson, um, 
uh, Jordan Tucker, Mark McKeithen. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on. The guys that I came in here with and then the guys that I'm leaving here with, they, we've been through some hard times. We've been through some rough times, but I think it's, it's a time to reflect on one another and just be happy and grateful. Um, um, just the, being a part of each other, for being a part of this team and being a part of each other's lives for so long and then playing ball for so long. So I think it's, it's going to be a time not only for us to reflect on our families and everything they've done great for us, but also to reflect on one another and be grateful for one another. C.L. Brown, go ahead. Hey, Jeremiah. Um, it seems like everybody I've ever uh, asked about you as a player will mention in some way, shape, or form your film study. When did you kind of embrace that and and come to use that as you know just as part of your preparation um i think that was when i thought i was really supposed to be a starter um the spring when coach mack and them came in um uh i saw my game evolve that where i um, in a position that i knew it could go to but um how could i keep evolving my game and game and game more and more and i think that just played onto the film room because um, I don't care how long you've played football, how long you've been in the game, how much you know you, th you think you know the game, the film room never stops. They're learning. I mean, it goes on and on with the concepts, um, schemes that different offenses run. So I would definitely have to say um, my, red shirt, uh, my red shirt sophomore year, when that year before, before I was about to start, I think that's when my film level really um, excelled to the next level because I knew how good I could be. It was just – how could I get an extra edge and how much, how could I get an extra step on the opponent? And that was by watching film, getting better at film. And then as, a, as it came along, I just, I mean, I, I loved being able to solve problems uh, in my head, like with the coaches. And I think that's something that, that's, that's carried a long way since I've been in college, like just having those conversations with coaches, um, players on, on what concepts we should run and maybe some concepts that we should throw out if, if we're feeling certain type, a certain type of way about the concept. And this might sound like a strange question, but at, at what point did you kind of understand what you were looking at? Like you went beyond looking at formations, you know what I mean? Like you were able to pick out specific things, maybe like how a guard lines up and how that might tip you off to if it's a run or a pass and, and getting into the minutia of what you're at. I think that was probably midway year through Max first year, my first year starting, I think. I think Coach Stig and uh, Jeff Schottmer do a great job of just picking up tendencies on offenses, whether it's the depth of the running backs, the uh, pass st steps, uh, stance of the offensive tackle, um, whether, whether the receiver at number one or number two is on the ball or off the ball um, became huge tendencies. And I think that's just something our coaches do a great job of picking up on. And, and as they were picking up on, and it was starting to give me um, you know, keys on the field that help me play better. I mean, I, as players, as you're starting to watch film, you also try to pick up on some tendencies that uh, the players, um, the opponent that you're facing are doing. So it's always great to have that help in the background because there would be uh, mornings we come in on uh, on Monday and uh, we'll be looking at film and we think we have, we, we have some good keys and then uh, Coach Digg or, or Coach Shot or Coach Shotman will walk in and he'll have some great information and great tips on on how to get a jump on the guys. And I think that's just all the tools that we use to help be better on the football field. All right, if I, if I can just ask one more related to that. So um, once you started getting into the film, did you kind of look back on, man, I could have been doing this a year ago and I would have been better. Like, was there ever any kind of like light switch moment, I guess, for you? Yeah, I said it was definitely a light, uh, light switch moment um, that year, but, uh, that's kind of the thing I tell all the young guys when, when they get in here and they uh, sometimes they get frustrated or they get uh, um, upset with the defensive scheme because it's so hard to learn. I try to tell them it's a process. Um, try to learn your one position, your one job, and then as you learn your one job and you get great at that, that's going to allow you to filter and look at the entire defense a, a whole different way because once you get on top of your job and you know what you're doing 100%, that allows you to scan um, the rest of the defense, the rest of the playing field, and find where your weaknesses are, find where your strengths are. So, um, yeah, definitely, definitely film's been a huge, um, 
huge impact over my career, but I wouldn't say it was like I, I would be upset with myself or or um, say like, dang, why didn't I start this early? Because I felt like I was always trying to get better and better. I think I just uh, really took it to that next notch the next year with um, when I started playing a lot more. And I think the, the coaches helped me a lot, helped me look at it a lot differently too, besides just watching X's and O's on the film screen. Okay, Ross Martin, go ahead. Hey, Jeremiah, I'm going to give you a uh, four players to comment on. You can just comment briefly on these guys, some, some fellow seniors um, that are being honored on Saturday. We'll start with uh, Taman Fox, your thoughts on him and like what he means to you, what he means to the program, that kind of stuff. Oh, uh, well, for me, Taman Fox, ever since I've been here, has been really a, a security blanket for me. Um, uh, and then he's a former Georgia boy, so when I came in early, he kind of, you know, helped me out along the way, helped me uh, show me how things were, were because he's, uh, you know, he's a year older than me. He showed me the standard at which he did things, and uh, I applaud him for that. And then just going out there on the field, having him by my side is, is really, um, really, like I said, like a security blanket, you know, when I'm either when I'm talking to the secondary or trying to get the secondary lined up because the offense is motioning a lot. We're going in and out of coverages. I could easily just tell Tamal when I were on the field, hey, can you can you take care of the defensive line when we go up there when we have to set the front based off the back, the the tight end, the Y, whether there's nobody in the court, I could easily go over to mine and he could be able to handle that that job for me so I could help the secondary out. And overall, the defense w would work a lot better if if Tamon was helping the D-line and I was helping the O-line or the um, the um, secondary, if the offense was, especially with fast tempo. So to be able to have Tamon out there, I mean, that's a huge security blanket for me. All right, Ray Vohasek. Oh man, Big Ray, another security blanket. Um, <laughs> the thing I can say about him, all my years playing with Ray, is, is his consistency. Um, he's been kind of banged up this year, but uh, you know, with Ray Vahasic, you're going to get every ounce of energy you're going to get from him when it comes game day. No matter if he's got a tweak in his leg, if if he's if he's down bad, if he isn't feeling good, you know when Ray Vahasic, if he is padding up and he does go on the field, he's going to give you 120 percent and. Uh, that's a guy who came in um, out of JUCO who you know, he didn't really know the defense, didn't know really what, where he was going to play on the defensive line. And he came in, learned, uh, came in, sat a year behind AC. I think he learned a lot. And you can see over these last two years how, how, how uh, the consistency of his play, how, how much that's been able to help this defense. All right. And Kyler McMichael, anything you stand out by him? Oh, Kyler. Um, it's funny because during the off season we're always working so hard training and uh, with Coach Hess we have like a, a lot of GPS numbers, a lot of uh, um, uh, flying tens, a lot of flying twenty starts that are timed, and we always uh, um, what's it called joke about times and who's running the fastest, who's who's going the hardest in the weight room, and uh, a guy that I could never um, stop to take my eyes off of was really Kyler McMichael. Um, his worth ethic is is by far one of the hardest I've seen in a long time, um, especially during the off season. Um, he'll be in here on Saturdays or right after a Friday. Usually our Friday sessions are our hardest sessions during the week. So on Saturday, you usually want to get a break in and you know get your body back together and, and rest up. But I'll come out here on Saturday and. I might be going up to the cold tub to rest my legs to get better going into the hot tub. And I see Kyler McMichael out on the, uh, I'll pass by the indoor facility and the gate will be open. I'll see him out there working on his, his footwork, his, uh, his, uh, his um, back pedal, his getting out of his brakes. And uh, that's the thing I can say about Kyler McMichael, a guy who, who works hard no matter what, never complains. And uh, I think he's just a full team player with, with what he puts into this team and how he's just always been bought into the team no, what, no matter um, if things are going good or bad. And, and that's coming from a guy who came from a different university who didn't start off here. So I think that tells a lot about him and himself. And finally, Sam Howe, your thoughts on the kind of what he's meant to you and to this program and, and um, as he gets honored on Saturday? I think he means, I mean, since Sam – Sam's joined this university and started playing football. He, I mean, he's, he, you can say he's the number one guy who's turned the whole tide around out there playing on the field. 
kind of like what I say about Ray, his, his consistency, his play that he's been – the throws he's been making for all of his years he's um, been here. You can say um, – you can say he was he played as a freshman his freshman year. He didn't play as a freshman his freshman year when I seen him came in. When he came in spring and fall camp, he was making decisions and throws that uh, a fifth year senior would be making at the quarterback position. Um, his poise and his uh, his calmness at the position is I think the highest as at what you want a quarterback. Because when when you go down seventeen nothing, twenty one nothing, twenty eight to nothing, I mean you got to have a good quarterback to come back and. Uh, and I think he's done that over the years. There hasn't been a blink in his eye. When we go down, Sam Howe doesn't bat an eye. And I think everybody on the team picks up on that. Like when we're down 17-9, 21-9, if we're down by a lot, nobody on the team really bats an eye because we know who we have back there at quarterback and we know we always have a chance when he's back there. And um, I think that's the confidence he's given the team throughout these years, the, um, uh, the motive factor going out there to win and compete at all costs. I think that's – I love Sam's brought to the table, and um, I think that's really f fed on the team. I mean, you can show how he's been running the football this year. I think that's something that um, hasn't been talked about uh, a lot, how he's been running, how he's not been sliding. He's been giving his body, been getting everything he's, he's given to this team, and I think that's just a testament to Sam. And, and I mean, you're seeing it out there on the field. Everything he gives out there on the field, everything that he gives to us, everything that, every single day. So I really can't say enough about Sam. Great. Thanks, man. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You have a good one. All right, Jeremiah. I appreciate it.